Come on, one more time. Put your hands together. Celebrate the victorious name of Jesus. Celebrate the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we thank you because you're in this place to heal, to save, to deliver, to do great and mighty wonders. We thank you because you're in this place to remind us that it doesn't matter what we are going through. You have a solid plan. The church is marching on. We thank you, dear God, because in this place you remind us that, dear God, there are brighter days ahead of us, Lord Jesus, if only by looking at the young lives that we just dedicated today. We know that, dear God, you have a solid plan, Lord Jesus. And so we look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. We came to this place because we understand that you know what you're doing. That's why we came. Some of us are in this place with heavy, heavy hearts, Lord Jesus. But still we came, Lord, because we believe you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, immeasurably more than we can think, ask, or even imagine. Lord, some of us are in this place full of thanksgiving in our hearts. And still, Lord, we came to this place because we know that you who gave are the only one who can sustain we come to this place, Lord Jesus, because we believe in our hearts that there is a void in the heart of every man and woman that only God can feel. Indeed, even in the hearts of young children that only God can feel. So wherever we find ourselves in life this morning, Lord Jesus, we came because we know you truly are the answer. And in that knowledge, Lord, we worship you. We worship your name. To just let the Lord know that you trust him today, that you... You trust him, you trust him. We trust you with our lives, Lord Jesus. We trust you, Lord Jesus. Great wellspring of life, we trust you. We trust you, Lord Jesus. You who did great things for the nation of Israel in the Bible. You who brought them out and caused them to cross over the Red Sea on dry ground. We trust you. This morning, we just want to say we trust you. We trust your plan. We might not understand the process, but we trust you. Hallelujah. Could you just lift up your hands if you can and just let the Lord know you trust him, that you, you trust him with your surrender. It's one thing to surrender when, when armed bandits are holding you at ransom. You don't surrender because you trust them. You surrender them out of, to them out of fear. It's another thing to surrender before the Lord our Father because it's not out of fear of what will happen if we don't surrender. It's that we trust him. We know no one else has a better plan for us and so we trust him. We trust you, Lord Jesus. To just say that out loud. We trust you, Lord Jesus. We trust you. We trust your hand. We trust your thoughts for us. We trust your plan for us. We trust you, Lord Jesus. We trust you even when we don't know what tomorrow holds. We trust you. We trust you even when we don't know where the next meal is going to come from. We trust you, Lord Jesus, because you cannot have brought us this far just to leave us here. You have a plan. You're not making it as we go. You have it from the beginning of time. And so we trust you. Oh, Lord Jesus, we trust you. You know what you're doing. Your word says that you know the end from the beginning and that your purpose will stand. That nothing, no power of hell and no scheme of man can undo the solid plan you have for the lives of your sons and daughters in this house today. We just want to let you know, Lord, we trust you. Oh, we trust you, we trust you, we trust you, Lord Jesus. For hearts that have been broken for so long, Lord Jesus, today we stand in this place to renew our commitment and to let you know, regardless of what has come, we trust you. Hallelujah. Nakuamini Mungu wa Israeli Hakuna mungu kama wewe. Imagine how that sounds so beautiful to the fathers here. Na kuwa mini mungu ha. To just make that song full of faith and surrender, won't you mean your words one more time? Na kuwa mini na ku Oh, 
Hakuna kama wewe. For someone that came to this place and you're at your wit's end, you're at the end of the road, I want you to know that you can trust God again. He can be trusted. His name is faithful. His name is faithful. You can trust him. You can trust him. Won't you believe me? And just one more time, lift your voice and let the Father know. Nakua mini wewe. Nakua mini sinashaka nawe. Sinashaka na mpango wako kwangu. Oh, nipitie nyikani bado najua wewe unaniweza. Nakuamini, nakuamini, nakuamini. Oh, rada randa raboshe zanda ya ndara rabos. Wewe unaweza, unaweza mambo yote nakuamini. Nakuamini we. Nipitapo moto ni bado na kuamini Nipate nikose bado na kuamini Come on, do not get tired just one more time Sema na kuamini Wewe ni yule yule tangu kale Na bado sasa wewe niwe yule yule Uruza kwa sina kipimo wewe of our hearts today that we trust you to speak to us today in accents clear and still and by the power of your Holy Spirit continue to assure us because we, we believe it and some of us really want to believe it but we ask that your Holy Spirit through his powerful conviction would convict the stubborn hard hearts in this place even those of our own in this place, that truly you are God that can be trusted. Be lifted, Lord Jesus. We love you and we honor you. Have your way today and speak to us, Lord, because we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we celebrate the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Let's put our hands together, celebrate the Lord for these amazing people. Come on, celebrate Jesus for the worship team. Amen. We trust the Lord Jesus. The Bible reminds us, and that is what we can say as well, that some trust in horses and some trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. You want to say that one more time? Some trust in horses and some trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. Put some faith in it and say, I will trust in the name of the Lord. Or oh, at least say it with a bit more life. I will trust in the name of the Lord. Amen. It's good to see all of us here in the house today. In the name of Jesus Christ. God is good. Come on. God is good. I am the testimony. God is good. And all the time. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Yes. All the time, things are indeed getting better. My name is Brian Mashigadi. I'm born again, and Jesus is Lord over my life. I'm so glad to stand here, and this is truly the honor of my life to serve God and his people here at DCIKZ. I thank the Lord for the opportunity every single time. Um, many thanks to the bishop and Pastor Alice for allowing us to serve alongside them and for their obedience to the call of God over and over and over again. We truly get to be beneficiaries of what the Lord is doing on this side of the earth. We're going to go right into God's word. It's good to see all of you in this place. Today, you're looking bright and radiant and blessed, and you look like the right candidates for God's move. Hallelujah. Amen. I sure hope that you came to church with an expectation. 
because the expectation of the righteous shall never be cut short. If you're expecting, if you're trusting, if you're waiting on the Lord, that is the one solid assurance that we have, that the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. I want to talk about something very briefly, uh, and it's just a reminder to all of us here today, just as the Lord has reminded us this morning that he's God that can be trusted. I um, want to talk about uh, what I titled, my working title was Progress God's Way. Progress God's Way. All of us know what it means to make progress, but we want to look at progress God's way today. As we're thinking about progress God's way, it is, it is important that we understand progress is the idea of God. Progress is not man's idea. Progress is not a thing that was created by human beings. And that is beautiful because if it is an idea of God, then we know it is God's desire for every single person. Right from the beginning, when God was creating, the Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. There was a reason for it. It says the earth was formless and void and the spirit of the Lord was hovering over the waters. And the Lord began to speak during the creation process and said, let there be light and let there be and it was. And the next day and the next day and the next day. The way God intended for things to be, the kind of order that he created the universe with only speaks to us so clearly and tells us that order is or progress is the idea of God. Because God did not create this, the, the fishes first and the animals of the water before creating the water first. He started by, first of all, making sure that there was a place where these things can be, can be built. That's why when all this is created, man comes last. And he says he has given to him all these things for food so that they can be able to be sustained. God has sustainability in his mind. He's thinking about tomorrow and the other day and the other day. God is thinking about progress. So that said, it is important then for us to realize because it is the idea of God, it is only right when it is God's way. Because um, like everything else that God has created, man has found a way to corrupt. Every single thing that the Lord has created, when it is put in our hands, because we are, um, our minds are so finite and so we don't, we don't grasp things the way God does. God has a whole wide understanding or grasp of things by ourselves, in and of ourselves, without the Holy Spirit. We are not able to grasp things the way, the Holy Spirit, the way God uh, grasps these things. Okay? And so it's easy for us to look at things and see that they are not working the way we want them to work, or the way we expect them in our smallness, we expect that they should be working. And so we corrupt them. We corrupt things. That's what we do. But blessed be God who came and put an end to corruption through the way of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. That in him now we are able to live and move and have our being, as Paul would put it in Acts 17 and 28. And so progress is the idea of God. When God is speaking to man, which is the Father's vision that we believe in in this house and that we center everything around, he says to man, be fruitful and multiply, Genesis 1.28, fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over all the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing. He says, be fruitful, multiply, have dominion. God is telling man, I have not just created you to sit around. I have created you to make sure that things are ongoing. In other words, I have built you um, for progress. If you look at yourself, everything about you says that you are created for progress. You're designed for progress. Well, mostly this, it says that you are designed to keep things going, which is ideally progress. Bona Just simply by looking at how you are created. And we are created in the image and likeness of God. It's, in, it's important for you to realize that the way your eyes are set on the front was not just by fluke. No, he put them there on purpose because you needed to move and you needed to see where you're going. The eyes are the light of the body. That's what scripture says, yeah? So he's put them there on purpose. Look at everything around you, even the way your ears are capped forward. I haven't met people with ears that are capped behind like this. Your ears are capped forward because it, it, it needs to inform you of where it is that you're going, even for the animals, by the way. The ears are capped forward. Yeah, you have been designed for progress. If you look at everything around you, even when you're kneeling down, those things that you don't do all the time, you kneel forward. I haven't met a person who is able to kneel backward. Yeah? 
I, I mean, the only time that it looks like you're not making progress, but you are, and we'll see that in just a minute, is when you're doing those things that make you um, move backwards when it comes to movement now. Okay? So you're able to take backward steps that looks like you're not making progress, but it could easily be progress in just a minute. You sit down and you're sitting backward, but there's still some of you that's going forward. You lie down and you're lying backwards when, you know, those things, those movement, those movements that tell you that, you know, you are still designed for progress. The way your feet are facing forward. Imagine how weird it would be if your feet would be facing backward or facing behind. You have been designed for progress just by looking at it. Now, I want to add another spanner to the works and say, for, um, progress is not just forward motion. Bonasifiwe. It's important for us to understand that the problem with progress, if we find that there is no progress, it is not that God has not allowed us to make progress because we've already covered and said that God has designed us for progress. The problem is in failing to view progress in a holistic manner. When we look at progress as just forward motion or just forward movement, then if we think that, if our definition of progress is just kusongambele, kusongambele, if we think that is it, then we miss it. So the problem is failing to look at progress in a holistic manner. To just assume that for, um, progress is forward movement. Um, to just assume that just because you're busy, you're making progress. So in the moment where you're not busy doing things, you assume you're not making progress. That's a lie. Bona sefiwe. To assume that you are, you are full of activity, you assume that because you're active, you're active, you're active, you're making progress. Isn't it possible for you to be going round and going round in circles? You know about the, the phrase going round in circles? Is going round in circles progress? No, it's not. You're busy, you're active, People cannot even catch you. You're a busy bee. You're working. You're all around, all around. But you're not making any progress. You're going around the same place. It is possible. Yet, it is possible for you to be seated down and camped and to be making progress. True or true? It is very possible because you could be taking some time to rest or replenish. That is progress. If you meet a fisherman and they are not out at sea uh, to do their fishing thing, Instead, you meet them at the shore, and they are seated. What are they doing? They are washing their nets. They are mending the nets. One as Ishona. Would you say that, ah, this fisherman is just seated here. They are not making any progress. Would you say that? Of course, if, you, if, your, if your definition of progress is that it is just busyness or activity or forward motion, then you would think the further out at sea a fisherman is, the more progress they are making. But that might not be true. They could be very far out at sea, but their, their nets are dirty, so they are not able, they are full of filth, they are not able to catch anything. Or their nets are broken. They are out there, there is fish, but the fish are coming in and going out. So that by the time they are coming back, they have nothing. To be out at sea for a fisherman is not necessarily to mean they are making progress. Such that when you find them seated, mending the nets, that is making progress. There is no forward motion, but they are making progress. So that we are not drunk with the idea that progress is just moving forward or being active or being busy. That we could be rested and we are making great progress. Have you gone to visit somebody in the hospital after a surgery and it was bad and they couldn't do much and you go and you find them and you are the dawa is, is, is in Aisha. You are being weaned off the meds. And you are being weaned off the meds. Kweli ya akosawa kweli. Mbona haendi mahali. Mbona hazururi. Mbona hakimbi. If you think that for them to go around, that means great. Then you're mistaken. Sindio. Because for somebody who has come from such a procedure, um, progress would just be today, they are breathing by themselves. They are making great progress. Have they moved from where they are? They haven't moved, but they are making great progress. The doctors come and they tell you, ah, he is making great progress today. And you are looking at them, you're wondering, why? How is your girl? He's blinking. This person, by just resting, by that activity, you just might as well be killing them. Because in that situation, progress is just sitting, replenishing, recovering, not doing anything. In that situation, the Lord is just speaking to them. So we already begin by, we have agreed that progress is the idea of God, and we have agreed that the, the problem 
for us with progress is when we think, we don't look at progress holistically. We think that progress is just forward motion. So why is it important for us to understand uh, progress, progress holistically? It is because I don't think there's a greater tragedy than climbing to the top of a ladder only to realize the ladder is leaning against the wrong wall. Imagine that. You spend all your life working and being busy. People see you, unamka asubui, unanza kupanda your ladder. Unapanda watu wanauna, wow, this guy is usually so busy. And then you get to the top of that building at the end of your life or at the middle of your life or at the end of the day even, only to realize when you're telling God, God, today I have come to the top of the building, top of the ladder, wow. And the Lord is not clapping for you saying, well done, good and faithful servant. Because you are leaning against, the ladder was leaning against the wrong wall. God is wondering, what are you doing at that top of that building? The building I wanted you to climb is not the cathedral, is TRM. It's in a whole different town altogether. Don't you think that can be solved by just, let's retreat, let's hear God first. What is he saying? Which, climb the ladder? Great. Which ladder? Which wall is it leaning against? Because it's not just any ladder. Not every assignment belongs to you. Pastor Alice tells us that all the time. Not every assignment belongs to you. There's something we call here uh, ability-based assignments. Yeah? Because you hear, you've heard of the phrase, jack of all trades, but master of none. Because even in the kingdom, it's the same. Even in your family life, it's the same. There are people in your family around your Azuri. For the mothers that are in this place, I'm sure you would understand. Those mothers that have children that are now a bit grown. You know, the teenagers, the young adults and stuff. Wageni wakikuja mtoto wako anajua kuingia YouTube, angalie recipe ya kupika pilau. Wewe ile pilau unajua ni ile ulionyesho na wamama siku ya arusi yako. So, hiyo pilau njeri ndi wa unajuaga. Wageni wakikuja, uki insist wendi upikage pilau. Hey, mimi ndiyo mama, mimi ndiyo napikaga. Ni sawa, lakini unadhani watu wanaenjoy kiyo pilau yako. Wanaikula tuju wako nanja. But if you allow somebody who has better abilities like your daughter, mwenye mejifunzia YouTube, najua story ya Julia Siego, ule wakurusha ile nini ya lijifunzia YouTube, YouTube champion. Na saizi, you know, with records in the world and so on and so forth. Your daughter has gone to nini ya mesomea kwa YouTube school of... <laughs> Culinary school of whatever. Culinary. I think. <laughs> and umruhusi tu, just ability based. Unamambia, wageni wanakuja kesho kutwa, cancel all your plans, we uko juti ya pilau. We pika hizo vitu ulifundisho uko kwenyu zenye unajua kupika, kama mokimo, na hizo vitu zingine. Ama ugali ya watu 50, we pika hizo. Lakini wachia sasa the experts wafanya the thing. You know, just ability based. Not every assignment belongs to you. A lot of us are so worn out because we are not thinking about what progress truly means. It's not just being busy. It's just sometimes just, you know, just relax and hear what God is saying. Allow the Lord to work in us. And that's why a lot of us have a diff difficult challenge when it comes to um, our silent seasons because everybody goes through seasons of silence, seasons of obscurity. You, you want to be a boss, you want to get to the top, you want to be an astute businessman. Watu wakitaka hapa advice, hapa zimaman wanakuja tuku kuona wewe. I mean, that day will come, bless the Lord, we trust that he will give it to you. But even when it comes, it needs to find a prepared person. So those silent seasons are for building capacity, for listening to what the Lord is saying. Bona sifir. So to understand progress, it is important. One of my favorite dictionary definitions of the word progress, because progress does mean um, forward and onward movement. True. Could to go like this, I am making progress. Yeah? That is one of the meanings, but that's not the only meaning. My favorite uh, definition of the word progress is movement to an improved or more developed state. Movement to an improved or more developed state. For instance, the example I gave about the person that is in a, on, a, on a hospital bed. For them, progress is not just forward movement or forward motion. It is, to being, it is movement to an improved or more developed state. All right? When your child is not going, I maraundi muenda kwa sababu wamezaliwa tu juzi juzi. Lakini anaeza akasema baba, mama. That is great progress. They are not moving. There is no motion. But they are moving to a more developed state. 
So I hope that now we understand that number one, progress is God's idea, and number two, that progress must be viewed holistically. It is not just forward movement, it has the idea of development and improvement with it, such that even the little to actions, mending the nets, staying home, resting, reading your Bible when you're not coming to preach in front of anybody. Those things, praying when you're not at in a season of prayer and fasting. You're just praying because that's what you need to do to hear God's, uh, to hear God's voice. Those seasons, that is progress. So that we're not drunk with being busy. People are not seeing me doing this. Uh, many times, and in this day, and age on, on, on social media, we, we see about YouTube um, YouTube. YouTubers, they are called YouTubers. Those content creators. There's a season where every content creator comes to a place where they are not creating content. Even for musicians, you release an album, you do not release an album today and next week and next month and you're releasing every year, every year, every year. There are seasons where after you release an album, you now sit back. Listen to the feedback from the people. You sit and you try and understand what are the people saying. For teachers, that's why you go to school, you teach for three times, and then there's a cab break. In that cab break, you get to understand, you get to hear what, what, what are the trends in the market. Even for us ministers, a season of silence could be a day, it could be a few hours, it's just, some, it's just a cab break. And in that cab break, you allow your soul to connect with the Lord Jesus. What is he saying to you? What is he redirecting? Hallelujah. I want us to look at just a few examples in scripture, um, and we're going to start with looking at the example of Israel, the nation of Israel at the beginning, because oftentimes God's idea, we are talking about progress God's way, oftentimes God's idea of progress has with it a deeper inner work. It's not just forward motion. That could be the case, but not all the time. Together with it, we said holistically, it has with it the idea of a deeper inner work. Richness that is not necessarily marked with money. For instance, when you're saying this cake is, this, this carrot cake is rich, a very rich carrot cake. Are you talking about the Daniel carrot cake kuna mapesa, magunia pesa? No, the idea of richness has with it something deeper. It is laden with something good. It has good substance on the inside. So when you're saying the blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no, sorrow, you're not just stuck with thinking the blessing of the Lord has filled my pockets with money. Not that that is a bad thing. That is part of it. But we said you look at it holistically. Because what does it profit a man to gain the whole world? And lose his own soul. It is a terrible thing if we filled this cathedral with believers that are full of money but no belief. We want people that are full of money <laughs> but also full of faith. Hallelujah. That actually the faith comes before the money. Because if the money comes and finds no faith, that's how we find ourselves with a, with a Christian nation full of people with Christian names, but no Christianity. Oh, it shall not be a portion in Jesus' name. It shall, this shall be a church full of richness. When we say richness, we mean the essence of God fills this place. And one of the essence of God is wealth. God is wealthy. And so he's able to release it to every one of us. But together with that, it's not just wealth, ya pesa, ni wealth. Wealth. You know when people are talking about wealth, this person has a wealth of experience. It's not just money. In the book of Genesis chapter 15, from verse 13 to 14 in the Amplified Version, the Bible says, And God said to Abraham, Know positively that you or know for sure, I like that one, know for sure that your descendants will be strangers living temporarily in a land, Egypt, that is not theirs, where they will be enslaved and oppressed for 400 years. Now, I want you to understand just before this, hold it right there, just before this, the Lord has appeared to Abraham and told him, I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward, and your abundant compensation. This same chapter. So the Lord has told Abraham, I am going to make you progress well, well. But then he's saying to him, know for sure, now he's breaking down the progress for him, that your descendants will be strangers. Abraham, I'm going to you, descendants. I'm going to you, that your descendants will be strangers. If you can count the stars, that is how your descendants are going to number. So he says to him, but I want you to understand, <laughs> those descendants I'm giving you, they're going to be in slavery for 400 years. But I love that the Amplified Classic says, no positively. 
Hallelujah. This is progress God's way. Because many times you are thinking, oh, the Lord is going to bring something to me. It's not going to be difficult. When we, when we lead people to Christ, we are telling them, you have not just come to a life of nyue. If there's any nyue, it's going to be because Jesus is holding your hand. So you will never go down. There's a song in Kikuyu, many times we go to functions, they sing and they say, Dika hotu on you tedero. Can I rema? Roge doini. It means I shall not be overcome by the slipperiness of the road or the hills and mountains in the journey. They are going to be there, but because you're holding my hand, I am with you. Actually, the first part says, Korea Gutage Gereka, Hinya Moige, New Heaga. The places where the un, un, is it unfordable and the unfordable places I am able to cross over because you give me great strength. That is the life of the believer. So the Lord is speaking to Abraham and saying to him, I want you to know that I'm going to give you descendants. So many you cannot be able to number them. But I want you to also know positively that they shall go through something. In the end, in verse 14, he says to them, I need you to understand that afterward they will come out with great possession. A different version says, the KJV says, with great substance. Hallelujah. That is what progress looks like. You might go through some things, but there is substance that is formed on the inside. Hallelujah. You remember when, when James is speaking and he's saying, count it all joy, my dear brethren, when you face all kinds of trial because it is going to work something. The trial has an assignment. The pain has a plan. Bona sefiwe. Progress. God's way. Later, God comes to bring that promise to pass in the book of Exodus chapter 13. He's speaking to... Um, uh, to now he's with Moses. He's already called the people out. This is during the, uh, the very first ever prison break that we find in scripture. Uh, they are being broken out of the land of slavery and they are now being brought into something, into the new promised land. Now I want you to understand, right from the beginning when God brings this plan in the book of Exodus chapter 12, right from the beginning, God has begun to take them to the promised land. When they leave, even before they leave, actually, when, they, when the ten plagues begin, when Moses has a... Ile siku enye Moses anafika kwa palace, hivi, ya Pharaoh. The exodus has begun. They don't get there in a long time. But know positively like Abraham that the exodus has begun. Progress has begun. Because the children of Israel, I want to imagine, were anxious. They are just ukondani like <laughs> biting their nails. Tumesikia Moses amefika. Moses ule, ule Moses wa mama nani? Ule Moses wa mama Miriam? Amekuja, amekuja, amekuja kututua. They are like, wow. Throughout the ten plagues, they are just wondering. Hey, atawezana na magicians wa fero? Anawezana. Ah, kume, anasikia kumejaa. Sijui the ten plagues ilikuwa gani. Anasikia kumejaa. Mto imekuwa damu. Anasikia viura vimejaa kida mahali. Anasikia kumekuwa na sijui nini. Kumekuwa na nuts. Gnats. Gnats. Mzimeja uko kila mahali. Alafu ya wanasikia fast bones wote wamekufa. <sighs> Wahuko Egypt. They are like, wow. But imagine, they were thinking, kwani inakaje? Si mungu alisema na tukuja kutuokoa. I want you to understand that before that, the Lord had already spoken to Abraham and said to him, after 400 years, I will come and I will get you out. They shall come out with great substance. Hallelujah. Now, later, 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 when Joseph comes to die, Joseph tells the people, the Lord will surely visit you in the book of Genesis chapter 50. And when he does, do not leave my bones in this place. Oh. If you're carrying Israel, if Israel is leaving, you carry me. I am Israel. The Bible actually records that Joseph was not, his bones were not buried in a ukochini, in a tomb. They were up. For 400 years, they were buried somewhere up the surface. Imagine how crazy that was. The children of Israel are suffering and being beaten for 400 years. They are being beaten. That journey began when Joseph went. Okay? Then the Pharaoh died and there arose a Pharaoh who had no regard for Joseph. And so the people became slaves. And so now, for 400 years after that time, wako huko chini, they are suffering. Waki Peter wanasema, hii nini inakuanga mifupa? Mifupa ya ule Joseph, ule mwenye alisema ati mungu atatutembelea. Ati aliambia baba yake. Ati mifupa. Siwa izike, ama waitupe na huko. There were people who died not believing. But Joseph, by the time he was resting, he knew God can be trusted. It might take 400 years, but my goodness, God can be trusted. I want you to understand, Joseph had not met with God that gave that promise to Abraham, his grandfather. The promise was given to his guka. Was it actually his guka or his guka? guka? 
The promise was given to him. Joseph did not meet with him, but he had, it had been passed on. Abraham anaambia watoto wake. Anaambia, oh, sasa wewe Isaac nataka uelewe. Nikikufa, Mungu atakujaza, atatuongeza hivi tutapanuka, tutapanuka. Wanatoka hapo, then from Isaac it continues to grow into a big big land. There is Jacob and Esau and it continues to grow and from there there is now Joseph out of the 12 tribes. Tuko pamoja hadi hapo. Eh, tuko pamoja. Now from that place I want you to understand every time for the 400 plus years because it wasn't exactly 400 there was a few kulikuwa na bakshishi ya tumiaka hapo lakini ilikuwa tu 400 wewe for every day for those 400 years people would look at those bones and say hmm there are those who would look at the bones and say that god is coming Woo! god is coming unapigwa kiboko mijeledi ya kweli na honi ni unainuka hivi unasema gai mifupa tunatoka huku god is coming I want you to understand there was progress even in that time. You need to understand that if the Lord had not taken the nation of Israel through, through Israel, Israel, Jacob, Jacob, so if the Lord had not taken them into the land of Egypt when there was a big famine and Joseph had been sold into that place to go and preserve them, then that nation of Israel will have intermarried with the Canaanite tribes and will have died. Not as a nation, but just as a small family. But the Lord used that famine, brought them in to the place of Egypt. They came and for 400 years, they continued to grow and to multiply. That's actually why they were put down as slaves. The Bible says they continued to grow and to multiply. And the Pharaoh looked at them and said, this is going to become a big nation. They are going to overpower us. Put them as slaves. They were put as slaves and they were punished with hard work. But still, the Lord used Egypt as a womb to cause the nation of Israel to grow. There was progress even in that difficult situation. Hallelujah. If the Lord had allowed them to just stay in comfort in Canaan, they would have died either because of the famine, famine, of the hunger that was there, or they would have gotten food however way, but they would have married with the Canaanite tribes, and they would not be preserved as a nation. But God knew that many years after that, there needed to come a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and he would come from that lineage. And so he used the nation of Egypt as a womb for them so that out of that difficult situation would come up a great nation. When they went in, they went as one family. But 400 years later, they came out as a nation. A great descendant of Abraham that the Lord had promised. The Lord had told him no positively. The difference between Abraham and the people that doubt is that Abraham was told no positively and he decided to no positively. He was told, no for sure, I will give you descendants. No for sure, they will go through difficulty. But I also need you to know for sure they shall come out with great substance. Do you want to know for sure? Are there some things that the Lord has promised you in your personal life and it looks like you're going through so much right now? It looks like things are difficult. It looks like ah, niata, you, cannot know, you don't know the right from the left. I need you to know for sure that God is able, that he is stable, he is available, that he is willing, and that he can handle anything that comes our way. If God said it, he is faithful to do it. The Bible says in the book of Timothy that if we are faithless, he remains faithful faithful because God cannot deny himself. He does not have it in him to be unfaithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is able to accomplish that which he says he will accomplish. If he said it, then he will do it. The singer sang and said that he has a perfect record of keeping his word. He has never failed, not once. Hallelujah. We can trust progress God's way. It does not look like progress, but it is progress anyway. Hallelujah. If we just fast forward, it's not, well, it's fast forwarding in our notes, but truly this came before that. Uh, the example of, jo uh, of Joseph. When Joseph was a dreamer in his family, he was just sold off. Just sold off. And um, he was sold off. His people, his family back, huko, they knew that this guy is dead. See, that's the story that the father was pelekewad. Kambia, the father is dead. But there are people who received him and they, uyu si wauku, uyu si wauku, uyu si wa Egypt, uyu. Uyu ni wakukuja. See, you're able to tell. Ukiangalia mtu wa nini. No, uyu ni wakukuja. So, anamuangalia, ameuzi wa kwa potifa. Kwa potifa anakani kama ana, the other Greek word is the rema. To the rema is to flourish. He looks like he's flourishing in Potiphar's house until Mrs. Potiphar begins to misbehave. Bad manners. And when she misbehaves like that, then Joseph knows 
positively that God has a plan. Just like his Wuka knows that God has a plan. He knows for sure that their, their assignment is to get out of whatever situation with substance. Not to, just to get out. Una, una, una angusha, injili, una angusha, una ebisha, nin, no. The assignment is to go through it and come out with substance. Hallelujah. That is making progress God's way. You know that I am not here just because God has a perfect plan. We said the pain has a plan. Hallelujah. And so jo J Joseph refuses to sleep with Mrs. Potiphar. After that, he's thrown in prison. But I love what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 39. He's in Ch Genesis 39 from verse 19, it says, Potiphar was furious when he heard his wife's story about how Joseph had treated her. So he took Joseph and threw him into the prison where the king's prisoners were held. And there he remained. It says he was not there for overnight. Other people might have said, Woi kale kakijana kalileto huku kenye kakukuja, kana pitia mambo, hako kakijana ni kama kaliendewa, hako kakijana ni kama kamefanyua urogi, hako kakijana ni kaka likorogi, hako kakijana, kana tukanga shida after shida after shida, after shida, hako kakijana kuna mtu wakana katumye vibaya, kuna kamtu kalika korogea. Kama hako kakijana kangeamua kusikiza venye watu wanasema, hata hako kaanze kusema, kweri nilikorogewa, nilipikiwa, nilikaliwa, nilitengenezewa, hako kakijana, hakangeweza ku tokelezea mali kali tokelezea lakini yako kakijana kali no positively that the pain has a plan i am here on assignment ephesians 2:10 says we are his workmanship created in christ jesus for good works which he prepared for us long before we were born whatever you're going through god is not making the plan as you're going it is not like a recipe that you don't know you're just koroga in vitu in the sufuria unatokelezea hala nilianza na pirao lakini sasa ni no, God knows that he's making something. Nizile nini, my recipes are Chef Ramsey. And I cut a cut and I cut just a sprinkle. Anatengeleza. See, Kitutu, he's not just making things up as you're going. I need you to understand God knows what he's doing with your life. The song says, from life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. Hallelujah. There is no power of hell and no scheme of man that can pluck me from his hands. He knows what he's doing, so let the devil do his worst. Woo! Come on, somebody. When you're reading Psalm 46, it says, the Lord is our strength and shield. He's an ever-present help in time of need. And then it continues to say, so let the, the mountains quake and the oceans roar and whatever and whatever else. Martin Luther says, let us read this 46th Psalm and then let the devil do his worst. Because I remain knowing, I know positively whom I have believed. The, the, um, the Apostle Paul says it well, I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. I know positively, I know for sure that he will accomplish that which I have entrusted into his hands. Hallelujah. The devil will try. I need you to understand the devil will try. While you're going through that season, the devil will try. But are you going to steward your season like Joseph did or are you going to waste it? What are you going to do with that season? You're going through a difficult season. You found yourself at a place you never assumed that you'll ever find yourself in. You've lost a loved one and that was your main. You are close together. But now what happens after that? I need you to understand positively that the pain has a plan. Our small minds are not able to comprehend. But the Lord has not called us to comprehend it because we are his God and we are not. The Lord has called us to just trust him. Trust that he knows what he's doing. He will try. I want you to finish, I want to finish by saying that Jesus... When Jesus was taken to the wilderness, the Bible says that he was led to the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. Imagine that. Imagine if Jesus were, were to think, uh, 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 I did not come to the earth to be in the wilderness for 40 days. I came into the earth to do great and mighty wonders. I came into the earth to heal, to save. If you read Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, which is really our theme verse in Deliverance Church, that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the brokenhearted and so on and so forth. If that was what Jesus just remained by saying, no, I cannot go to the wilderness. Spirit, you will not lead me to a difficult place. I just want to go and heal the sick and say to that young lady, Talitha Kum, and people to just clap in the room. Wow, wow, wow. He's raising the dead. Wow, what a beautiful thing. If that is what Jesus would have just stuck with, then I don't think he would be fulfilling the full purpose and plan of God. I believe 
that beginning of his ministry after baptism, the Bible says the Spirit of God, Jesus, full of the Spirit, was led by the Spirit to the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And then it finishes by saying in that kafut note, and the devil <laughs> came to tempt him. I want you to know the devil will try, but will you steward it like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Be like Jesus. He came out of there with substance. That after that 40 day experience, we are still talking about his works 2,000 years later. Oh, hallelujah. That is coming out with great substance. You shall come out with great substance in Jesus' name. May the Lord help us to steward our seasons to the glory of his name and to the shame of the enemy in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you because you've spoken to us today. We know that, dear God, your Holy Spirit is able to follow these things up even more. Oh God, I pray that you will continue to follow them up. Reveal to us the seasons that we are in. And when we come into seasons of silence or, or, or obscurity, I pray that you will remind us that this is still progress. It might not look like the world requires it to look like. It might not even look like our small minds would like it to look like. But Lord Jesus, your word has said that if we know positively, know for sure that you know what you're doing, we shall come out with great substance. We don't need to understand. We only need to trust. Teach us to trust you. Teach us to trust you. That even in those silent moments, as we read our Bibles, as we pray, as we fellowship with other believers, even though not much is happening, we will know that on the inside, there's a whole roaring sea of activity because you're working great things on the inside to the praise and to the glory of your dear name. We ask that you will teach us to trust you. Because that's the only way we make true progress if we trust the master's hand. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord keep us trusting to his praise and to his glory in Jesus' name. Amen.